Avenue. Okay. Me, 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 me. All right. Hello, random people. Hello, random people. Hello, random people. Hello. Oh, we're not doing this today. No, 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 no. Nope. Hey, everybody. Hello everybody, my name is Keegan Luther and welcome back to the Random Stuff Film Festival. I'm your host and I will be... <sighs> Alright, fine, so this is how this day is gonna go. That's one way to treat people. You know, look, Ben, you do this like every week. Do you just want to introduce the film? <laughs> you want me to introduce the film? Do you just want to introduce Naria Ambara's film Across Forest Avenue? I mean... You don't have to beg. Twist my arm, I'll do it. I'd probably be really good at okay, it. Okay, go. Fine. I don't care. You said it. Just I, go. I got you. it. Don't worry about it. So, Across Forest Avenue is a film that we loved because, sure, it is timely and specific to this certain quarantine era, but it's really timeless in showing how beautiful relationships can blossom, even in the most troubling of times, and finding the good in this bad that we were all kind of struggling with is everything someone needs to have that comfort. And that's exactly what this film is. It's a comfort movie. So without further ado, here is Across Forest Avenue. Okay. All right. Yeah, sounds good. No, no, I, I wasn't. I... <laughs> No, I just, no, I didn't, I wasn't doing, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, oh, nice home, get it.
That's right, son. Yeah, you guys have a good one. Okay, stay safe. Hi. Alrighty, first of all, would you like to introduce yourself and then tell us about your movie a little bit? Alright, well, um, hello, my name is Nuria Ibarra. Um, I'm a junior at ASU, I'm still in school. It was an idea I came up with over the summer when we were all still in quarantine over COVID and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cute to have like a little rom-com that's like very relevant to what's going on right now. It was very just like lighthearted for fun kind of film. Sweet. Was it based on any kind of romance you struck with the person across the street from you? Oh no, you already ah. no. I live in a very small town over the summer, and so there was nothing. I was like, what if? <laughs> so this is you just dreaming. This was <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. It was based off of an idea that someone I'd seen someone talking about on like an Instagram post or something, and I was like, that would make a cool movie. So. Yeah, and you made a very charming, very sweet, very cute movie. So you made this during quarantine, I assume. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that tough? How'd that go? Well, I wrote it during quarantine. I actually shot it last October? No, September? Mm -hmm. Around there. That was when we shot it. But yeah, we wrote it. I wrote it during quarantine. And then uh all production was in the fall. Yeah, so you still had to go through a lot of COVID uh, precautions, I assume. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, what was the most unique part about this piece in general? Because uh, I'm assuming you've made other shorts prior to this. Yeah. Um, what was special about this one? Mm. Well, there are two things that I find really special about it. As a story, I think that it's definitely relevant to its time period, which makes it like kind of like a hidden gem if you know what i mean it's like one of those movies where unless you were in the world at this point in time you wouldn't really know what, why the movie is made like why it's a thing kind of like with if you look at like art or films or stories told around like wartime like the lord of the rings tolkien world war ii like if you weren't living there you wouldn't quite understand how relevant the piece was and sure. so i feel like that's something that this film has not like on that great scale as like lord of the rings obviously it's just this tiny little whatever but it kind of has that quality of, like you put it in a time capsule, like this is what 2020 was like. Yeah. Or like the your, it's your tiny little whatever, so that's what makes it special. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what was like the biggest surprise that happened after you made this? Was there anything you pulled back and watched it and were like, oh, wow, didn't expect that to go this well or this different? There was a little part in the beginning of the film where Grace is closing the blinds and it gets stuck and that was like not intentional. <laughs> that just happened. And very, very relatable. I will yeah, say. very relatable. I tried to get a take that was just like where they didn't get stuck, and we got it. But it was just surprising to me how better it was with the blind fixing up. That was a tiny little. Oh hey, that was cool. When we were editing it, something that me and my DP had talked about was with like shot composition of starting up with like a bit more wide shots, get more stuff in the frame. And as like it goes on and like they get closer, the two characters were like more tight on their faces. And so it kind of resembles like shot reverse shot if like they're in the same room, like in a conversation. And I wasn't sure how that was gonna play out, but then when we were editing it, it like worked out really well. And when I watch it back again, like I show somebody, I show a friend, they're like, wow, yeah. 
I think so. Yeah, it totally complements mm -hmm. like the plot of what's going on as they're developing this friendship. So is there anything that you hope that audiences take away from this piece? Realizing, okay, in this moment of time, where was I? And like, what was a good thing that was going on in my life? Like for these people. Yeah. And I, I think they're silly to say that it won't stay relevant. Cause I mean, end of the day, the theme is like a budding relationship. Mm. Not as much, and the quarantine is just the setting of it. You can put the setting anywhere. Yeah. Glad you stuck to course and didn't listen to any haters or naysayers. Yes. Block out the haters, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the interview. And I'm excited to show off the movie to a whole new audience. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Wow. Well, you know, actually, that, uh, that wasn't too bad, Ben, and good job on the interview. Yes, occasionally I do pay him a compliment. But anyway, listeners, thank you so much. We love Nerea's film. We thought it was a really great direction, especially how she conveyed the story. It was so romantic, and we just, we loved her film, and we can't wait to see what she does next. And that's why we thought it deserved Best Director. We're so excited for next week. Uh, same time, same place, and we will be presenting Higher Ground. It's a great film, but we can't wait for you to see it. It's just a visual spectacle. And don't forget to check us out on our social medias at Random Stuff and follow us on our website as well as just anything and everything. So please, thank you so much for your support. It really helps these incredible filmmakers, and we just try to do our best to give them the platform that they deserve. So, please, just come back next time, and until next time, please... <laughs> it's just one second. It's just... Ben, what do you want? I want everybody to stay inspired! Done. Well, what he said. <laughs>Hey, what's up, you guys? Thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you have the time, please make sure to check out, you know, our next video, which is up, up here. Yep, up here.